Hey, what's going on guys? Okay, so we're going to backtrack a couple days to some of my previous videos before I get into the um, into what I want to report on in this video. It's all going to tie sh stuff in together and probably shed some light on what's really going on. Alright, so I reported earlier uh, a few days ago that the United States led an airstrike. Um, United States coalition force led an airstrike in the southern part of Syria in al -Tanif. Um, that's where the United States is set up, you know, and we're assisting all the uh, all the coalition forces that's against Syria. Um, that you know, we got the Kurds over there. And now it's also being reported that um, Jordan's over there. Um, the British and the Norwegian forces are over there as well, joining in with the United States. So we're having a bunch of different factors that's joining up in that area okay and if you guys remember you know there was an envoy going towards the base and we gave them a warning to stop and they didn't listen so we led some airstrikes and damaged some equipment um and then in another video i did speak on donald trump's um trip to saudi arabia where he brokered a 109 billion dollar arms trade um, and then he went over to Israel and talked to their their president, not uh, not Tanyanyu. I'm sorry, I know I didn't say that right. Um, on the peace talk for Palestine, for the Palestinians and the Israels to um, come back together as one nation, and he stated that he would love to do it, but before he there's peace talks, Hezbollah had to be dealt with. Now I speculated in that video that maybe. There's a reason why we gave Saudi Arabia, you know, why they gave us $109 billion for an arm deal. And it speculated that we could very well use Saudi Arabia to go into Syria. And that would draw Hezbollah into Syria. And that would cause a conflict on that front. Um... You know, be, all, all because Hezbollah has been, you know, shooting scud missiles over in Israel, you know, threatening them. Hezbollah is a, or, a terrorist organization within Iran. And then don't forget all the banter going back and forth between President Trump and Iran um, over the nuclear deal that Hillary and Obama made, um, sending billions of dollars and giving them nuclear power. You know, um, they Iran promised everybody in the world that they weren't going to be using... They weren't going to be making missiles to attack anyone. They they were going to do it for defense. But it clearly, sh you know, in the past reporting and everything, that Hezbollah has been using those those missiles against Israel. All right, so anyways, um, there was speculation about how Saudi Arabia was going to go into Syria. Iran was going to jump in because Iran is forced their friends with the Russians and Bala al-Shad there in Syria. So, of course, you would have, you know, if we use Saudi Arabia to go into Syria, that would bring Iran into the conflict, okay? And when they're starting to weaken up, you know, as those two forces are clashing, you know, Israel would come in and take over, and then the United States would back them up. So, we're starting to get a sense of, you know, um, deception, going on a lot of a lot of mind games going on and as of as of a couple days ago that was speculation on that could be a possibility um i have i have sources right now and i will post the links in the description you guys can read this stuff for yourself i can't make this stuff up um Leban there's a website called lebanese forces and it's it's a, this is all in different languages, all right? So when you guys go to these websites, you're going to have to translate it. Google has the translator. Translate it, and you can read everything in English or whatever language that you speak. Um, so anyways, the United States military built up on Jordan and Iraqi borders. And again, I said that they now include the British force and the Norwegian forces. Okay, so they're getting bigger. Um, Turkish news is reporting that Trump bombing Syria, Iran, and frightened Hezbollah. Yesterday, it went public that the third underground missile facility was complete within an Iran. All right. Um, and then I have another source 
that I'm going to share with you guys. The South Front reports showing Russian forces deployed near Syria's border in Jordan. All right, so the way I'm looking at this is what I was talking about was just speculation that could happen. All right, now with everything being reported on, it seems like it's all it's all unfolding. You know, you're getting all the force built up on the southern part of um, Iraq, Jordan, and Syria border near the base of Al Tanif, and then you're going to have Iran and Hezbollah working together within the region. They're sending troops towards that base right now, and same as Russia. Now, they could be going over there to try to de-escalate the situation, let their presence be known. Um, Russia's not over there. It hasn't been stated that Russia will fight in the def defense of Bal al -Shad. You know, if we go over there and try to retake the regime, you know, it's still not 100% sure if Russia would fight back or just go. Um, but as of right now, like I said, you have you have Syria, Iran, and Russia. Those are three allies, okay, within this country that's, you know, the civil war is going on. And then here you have the United States backed up by the Kurdish forces, which I stated earlier, I think last week, that there was a lot of banter going on between Turkey and the United States. For Turkey thinks that the Kurds is a terrorist organization within Turkey. The United States admittedly said, yes, that may be true, but we are not in Turkey. We are in Syria. So therefore, the United States acknowledges what Turkey was saying, but it's a different scenario because we're in Syria. So you got, you know, you got the Turkish wanting to sit there and argue with the United States, talk, telling the United States to back off of the Kurdish forces because Turkey wants to come over and take care of them. And then you have the British coming in, of course, back in the United States forces. Um, now we got Nor... Nor uh, I, I always stumble when I say this. The Norwegian forces coming from Norway. Um, and there has been a lot of talk, a lot of banter back and forth between Iran and Trump. You know, Trump doesn't doesn't agree with the trade deal that we made with Iran, you know, giving them nuclear power and billions of dollars. So uh, I reported in a video last week that Iran, you know, they were having marches and protests, burning and stabbing, you know, plastic inflatable dolls of Donald Trump screaming death to America. So we already know that they don't like Americans, especially they don't like them in their back door, you know, in their backyard playing. Um, and Hezbollah being... The terrorist organization that's been terrorizing Israel. Now, Donald Trump has made it very clear that we stand with Israel. And I don't see that that going down anywhere. I seriously think that if something bad was supposed to was going to happen to Israel, I think Donald Trump would retaliate. Okay, so I just want to let you guys know that all the pieces are starting to set up. Um, everything that I speculated and talked about within the last couple of days, it's all starting to come to light, you know. Um, now, I'm not saying that we're going to, you know, within the next week that we're going to be in a war. I'm not saying that. I'm just, I'm just saying that, you know, it's going to be interesting to see what comes out of the Middle East within Syria. And this could be, I mean, this is going to bring a lot of nations into it if this, if this goes down. Um, I don't think it would be a global conflict. I don't think it'll be like a world war, like a major one, like um, like everyone's speculating. Um, the only way that I really see it getting bad, 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 I mean, war is bad in general. You know, I mean, we send our, you know, our brothers and our sisters, our moms and our dads and our children over there to fight, to fight a war. And half of the time, these guys are clueless. They don't know what's really going on. You know, so I don't, I don't want war anywhere, but at the same time, you know, it, I, I said it in a video before, if, if I have my choice between what two countries to go to war with right now, with the two aggressions that's going on with North Korea and the regime change that they're trying to enforce within Syria, I would rather see that war than North Korea. I said it before, North Korea is playing with deadly nuclear power making threats, testing ICBMs uh, for distance, 
they've made threats to strike on the U.S. land. Um, and then there's just so much going on over there, too. But like I said, within those two countries, Syria and North Korea, I would rather see Syria, uh, a Syrian war. Um, so everything, you know, all the all the pieces are lining up. You have Russian forces starting to move towards Al Tanif. You have Iran and Hezbollah working together, going towards the border where the United States is with the Kurds, the Jordanians, um, the British, and the Norwegians. And then, um, you know, it's it's still up in there. We don't know what Russia is doing. Um, now, I do know when Sergei Lavrov was here and we did that airstrike, he had no clue. He had no clue. No one told him nothing. So it's going to be interesting to see what comes out of this one, guys. Um, I'm going to keep my, you know, I'm going to keep my um, my focus on this. And as it unravels, it's not going to, it's not over yet. It's not going to be over, as you guys can see. There's a lot going on. A lot of different factors, a lot of finger pointing. Again, we want to, you know, the United States wants to go over there and overthrow Bala al Shad. You know, for acting, acting as if you know he's a terrorist. You know, he's killing his own people. Um, and then, like I said, you know, within the whole Donald Trump impeachment thing, you know, and that leaked phone call that was from President Trump and Rodrigo de Rocha, the leader of Philippines, how he is doing, um, how he's doing a very well, good job on the war on drugs on his streets. But it's also being speculated that, you know, Rodrigo is also killing his civilians. You know, so, I mean, I, there, there's two different things going on here, guys. One, you know, everyone's going to hate on him because, you know, if that's true with Rodrigo, if he's over there raging a war on drugs, which I applaud, but if he's killing his own civilians, you know, and Donald Trump's backing him up on that, <clears throat> but at the same time, you know, we're going to go, we're over there in Syria and we're going to overtake Bala al Shad in Syria because he's killing his own people. I mean, like, it's, which one is it, guys? I mean, are you guys going to call one and not the other? You know, I mean, come on, put your facts on the table. All right. Um, anyways, guys, I'll, I'll post the links. Again, all these links you're going to have to translate to English. Um, this is what's being talked over in the Middle East. This is what's really going on over there. You know, CNN, they're probably not even talking about this. Or MSNBC, they're probably still talking about the Donald Trump leaks. Or delegitimizing him for impeachment. Like I said, they're really pushing that agenda. So, um, again, check out the links in the description, guys. Um, keep your eyes open. And I'm just bringing this stuff up to you guys. Because if this does hit mainstream media, you guys won't be blindsided. Alright, bye guys.